mutinous Russian mercenaries who had been surging to Moscow agreed to turn back on Saturday to avoid bloodshed. That's according to the leader of the Wagner private army, Yevgeny Prigozhin. Wagner. In an audio message, the former ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin said his forces got about 125 miles from the capital. Now the moment has come when blood could be spilled, he said, adding, we are turning our columns around. Reuters could not independently verify how far fighters got. The de-escalation of the major challenge to Putin's grip on power was brokered by Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko, his office said. Under the deal, Prigozhin will move to Belarus, the Kremlin said, with safety guarantees for the leader and his men. It all marked a dramatic U-turn from just hours before, with Russian armored vehicles rolling past the Kremlin, checkpoints outside Moscow and warnings to residents to avoid going out, and in the previously rebel-captured city of Rostov-on-Don, troops began pulling out by Saturday night. The lightning insurrection appeared to unfold without much pushback from Russia's regular armed forces. Prigozhin had said his so-called March for Justice was intended to remove corrupt and incompetent Russian commanders he blames for botching the war in Ukraine. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said the Wagner revolt exposed, quote, complete chaos in Russia. It came just as Kyiv is launching its strongest counteroffensive since the war began last year. Western capitals said they were watching developments closely, with U.S. President Joe Biden speaking with the leaders of Britain, France and Germany. Abortion rights campaigners marched through the streets of Washington on Saturday, marking the one-year anniversary of the Supreme Court's decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. Abortion is freedom! That's the 1973 ruling that once legalized abortion nationwide. Celeste Helm was among those heading to the country's top court in protest. It's blatantly discriminatory because women from the middle class up will be able to afford to go seek out an abortion. That's a given. So it's really, the, the burden is on women in the lower economic strata and young teenagers who don't have those options, which is unfair. Last year's ruling allowed states to ban abortion care for the first time in nearly 50 years. Conservative states have passed a flood of legislation to restrict the procedure, while others have moved to protect abortion access. Democratic Vice President Kamala Harris spoke in North Carolina, where a new Republican-backed law will take effect next month. It cuts the legal window for abortions from 20 to 12 weeks of pregnancy. She called for a national legislation to protect abortion rights. All of us are now called upon to advance the promise of freedom, including the freedom of every woman to make decisions about her own body, not the government telling her what to do. 48th Vice President. Back in Washington, former Vice President Mike Pence spoke at the National Celebrate Life Day rally. He thanked abortion opponents for their work in sending Roe to, quote, the ash heap of history. We will never rest and never relent until we restore the sanctity of life to the center of American law in every state in the land. So help me God. 14 states have implemented a near total abortion ban in the past year, even as opinion polls show a majority of Americans want abortion legal in all or most states. The issue is expected to remain central in next year's congressional and presidential races as activists on both sides use the first anniversary to mobilize their base. Yeah!